Hi, and welcome to A Thousand Splendid Dolls. My name is Shelly, and I thought since I've been making videos for about two months now, close to there, it was about time that I formally introduced myself and told you guys a little bit about me, my collection, and my journey that brought me here. So without further ado, so I'm 24 years old, and I've been obsessed with dolls since I was two years old. I collect all different kinds. I love American Girl and Bratz. They're my primary like interest. So that's why if you follow me on Flickr or you see me do hauls and stuff, I tend to buy American Girl and Bratz dolls brand new more than anything else. You won't see me buying a lot of like Barbies or Monster High or other things at the store nearly as much comparatively. That being said, I'm a heavily based um, second-hand collector. About 60% of my dolls last I checked were purchased like just straight up second-hand from the flea market, you know, played with. I'm not counting the dolls that I got at the flea market boxed or dolls that I got on eBay that were played with or boxed, just literally like from second-hand places. That's a pretty substantial bit of my collection, considering that I have over 2,500 dolls right now. I haven't totaled it in a while, it's been a few months, and we've been getting a lot of dolls at the flea market and stuff in bins, so I'm sure that's more like 2,600 now. That being said, I like to go with the flow, that's my style of collecting. I like my doll collection to reflect my experiences and what I happen to find. In the beginning, when I first started collecting dolls again, because I did take like a five year break from it at some point, I definitely cared a lot more about like the aesthetics of what I was going to collect and I really analyzed it. But as time has gone on and as things in my life have changed, I've definitely kind of loosened the reins and I've learned that it's more fun to just sort of let it happen. And that's what my collection reflects. So if I happen to find eight Strata Yasmin dolls, then that's what I have. Or if I happen to want that random girl of the year American girl that I didn't think I would like, I'll buy her. That's, that's kind of how I am. I don't have an end goal with my collection. It's not that I want to have every rat doll or every doll from every line, anything like that. I really just, I just enjoy finding what I find and loving what I find, even if it's unexpected. Everyone has a different way of collecting and that's just what works for me and stresses me out the least. So. It's definitely a hobby that I share with my sister. If you guys follow me on Flickr or if you've watched some of my videos, I talk about her a lot. We do it together. It's always more fun when you have someone that understands it in the way you do and care about it as much as you do. It was something that we did growing up. We loved playing with dolls. They were our friends. They were our comfort. And that leads me into my next point, that for me, my dolls aren't just plastic, you know, toys that I display. They, they represent memories and people in my life and they've taught me a lot about who I am and what I want from life. And maybe that sounds kind of silly, but through my doll collection I really learned to embrace who I am as a person. Because when I was a teenager I was embarrassed. I stopped collecting dolls for five years from like 2006 to 2011, I thought I had to conform. And the truth of the matter is I never really grew out of dolls. And that's normal, a lot of people grew out of their toys, they get interested in different things. But for me, it was like something I repressed. I just decided one day, like it's time, no more dolls. And it sort of was something I had started to distance myself from for for a few years I had slowly started to phase them out and then it got to the point where one day that was it. They were just packed up and put away and not touched for, you know, several years. But I didn't do it, like I said, because I was honestly disinterested. I think I was at that point in my life where I was starting to grow apart from playing with them. Like I wasn't as interested in sitting on the floor and like playing with them with my sister. There were other things we would have rather been doing, but we still liked spending time with the dolls. We still liked collecting the dolls. It was just a shift in interest and back then I didn't really know how to interpret that. And I thought it meant like, oh it's time, it's time to say goodbye. And I was sad during those few years because I changed myself to fit what I thought other people wanted me to be. And I know from talking to a lot of people online that so many of you can relate to that. And I think it's one thing to do something for yourself because you're genuinely ready to change. And it's another thing to do it just to please other people or because you think you have to. You don't have to do anything that you don't want to do in life in terms of like 
something like doll collecting. It's not like, you know, having to get a job or something. It's, it's doll collecting. If you want to collect dolls, or you want to color your hair orange, or you want to move somewhere, you can do those things and you don't have to answer to anybody else. And that was a really hard concept for me to grasp. And when I would be out and I would see dolls, even as like a senior in high school, at like, you know, Walmart, or when I'd be at the flea market with my dad and my sister and I would see a pile of secondhand dolls, I would still have the impulse to go over and look. Like, I would still want to look at those dolls. I would still want to buy those dolls. And my sister and I would still talk about dolls. It was just sort of something that I forced myself to not actually do. And what got me back into collecting dolls was things changed in my life. When my dad got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, when I just graduated from high school, it was like the Christmas after I graduated, he was in surgery like the few days before Christmas and was still like in a coma that Christmas. You know, it really changed my opinion on what was important. I realized like, hey, I, I'm not being true to myself. And from there, it kind of snowballed and I started you know, getting books on dolls, and eventually, like by 2011, I started buying them again. And through that, I found myself, I found my passion for art, I found self-confidence, I found self-love, and it's amazing what, when you really accept who you are, even if it's something as silly as collecting dolls, everything else falls into place. And that's what I ultimately want to share with all of you, because you know, as much as I like making guides and helping people identify dolls and sharing kind of like the more research end of it, for me, I'm here because I want to show you guys what I've learned and hope that maybe some of you don't have to find out the hard way. Because, you know, for me, my aha moments in life were a result of really bad things happening, like my dad getting sick or my dad passing away. And I want all of you guys to maybe have the opportunity to see that before it's too late that you can be you and authentically you and you're never going to make everyone happy and at the end of the day it's important to do things in life that fulfill you and most importantly that surround you with positivity and that's what I try to do. I try not to overanalyze what I'm doing with my dolls. I try not to think about it too much. I don't compare myself to other people anymore. It's not about other people and how they collect dolls or what they do with their dolls. At the end of the day, it's me and what I'm doing and what makes me happy and that's how everyone should live. Everyone should focus on themselves and you know, if you're going to be inspired by other people, take something positive out of it. But you don't have to be exactly like them. Because I was definitely one of those people when I was younger where I would see something I liked in someone else and I'd want to be that person. But it's important to be true to who you are and what you like, even if that's a little weird to some people and they don't understand it. So. I hope that all of you guys, you know, find some something out of these videos I make or out of my pictures that I take on Flickr that, you know, they make you happy for a moment or they make you like a doll or it's just a place where you can come and be chill and relax and not think about it. I am not a negative person. I really aspire to be happy and I think it's okay to have your moments, but that's definitely not what I bring to the table, you know, to the internet. I want to project an image of positivity and happiness because that's what dolls should be about. It, it's not about, you know, fighting and what's better and what's right and what's wrong. And that definitely took me a long time to figure out. You know, I had another attempt at like an old Flickr account years ago right after I lost my dad, but you know, my life was kind of a mess and I couldn't, I couldn't be there for other people and you know, put out the best version of myself when I didn't really know who that was at the time. But, you know, being that I'm 24 now, I've definitely gotten a different perspective and I'm still growing and changing, but I feel like I better know what my purpose is. So every time I post a video and every time I, you know, take a picture and upload it and everything that I write, I have a reason for doing it. There's a thought process behind it and that for me is what has made this Flickr account and this YouTube channel work is that, you know, I know what I'm doing. I have like a mission that I'm trying to accomplish and that is to share the love and to share the positivity and to share, you know, this, this experience with all of you. Because 
I found that when I reach out and I, you know, say personal things about my dolls and how they've affected me, that you guys as a whole respond to it and you know it it makes me so happy when you know even in my my brats collection video which i uploaded a little while ago when i was mentioning um that my dad had passed away just briefly because you know he had so much to do with my brats collection that there were so many of you in the comments who were coming forward and saying that you had lost a parent or you know just being so nice and wonderful and i was really surprised by that because usually youtube kind of has a stigma of like the negative community and I didn't really know what to expect when I started uploading. I mean, Flickr is a lot more laid back and tame. So, you know, I mean, I even have my comments set on approval just to make sure that, you know, if there's a nasty comment that comes through, that it's not out there for anyone else to have to see. Because that's the thing about negative energy. Even if you're trying to leave it just for one person that you don't like, like if someone comes to my video and they want to tell me that they don't like me or my dolls, it might be aimed at me, but anyone who reads that gets affected and it, it rubs off, and that's not what I want to create. So let's all, you know, enjoy the dolls and enjoy each other and spread positivity and happiness and be true to ourselves because that's what it should be about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you like this style video where I kind of talk about like experiences with dolls or there's something you want to know more in detail about I would be happy to make them. I do plan to make them. I do plan to kind of you know make different videos about you know different types of dolls and what they mean to me kind of like I do on Flickr and um, more of that will be happening on Flickr too. So until next time <coughs> love your dolls and love yourself and love your life. <laughs>